Hi everyone, welcome back into the classroom. We're going to talk about turning flowers. I get a lot of questions about this and Vicki wrote me and said that she really wanted to have another video to explain it a little bit more. And it is a very difficult subject when you're going to turn flowers. But let's take a look at it and then we'll go right into a painting with it, okay? All right, so here's some daisies. To me, learning how to turn daisies are, is one of the, the uh, greatest ways to learn how to turn all flowers because the daisies give you the individual petals and it's easier to see the brush movement, the direction of your brush movement you need to make when you turn a flower. First off, when you go to turn a flower, a regular flower is like if you're just going to look at a daisy, is just a circle. And then of course into the, this, this will be the center here. And then all petals will radiate into that center. Now, as you turn, as you turn a flower, the circle becomes an oval. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is do more of an oval here. Okay, now if I drop the center, let's say I have the, the stem coming here. If I drop the center down a little bit lower here, this gives me short petals up onto this side here. The longest petals are up on, really up on by the ends, and then slightly longer ones here. But the long petals up on the end causes the petals to turn, causes the whole daisy to turn because it makes an oval shape. And sometimes when you're looking at daisies, and I always tell them, go out and get all kinds of pictures of daisies. But if you look at a daisy, I like this one with the bug in it. If you look at this little daisy here and it's turning, and you would first say, okay, that's a circle. No, it's not. It's an oval. And so what I did is, like here, just to check it, I made a little pencil mark. If I make a little mark here, which is the end of that daisy right there, and then the, the far petals right out here make that little mark here. Now, if we take, so that's the width of that da daisy that way. And if we turn it, you can see right here really clearly that that daisy is not as long out to here. So it's not a circle. It is an oval shape here that's going this way dropping the center down and you can make shorter little petals to one side, long little petals. That causes the daisy, the flower to turn and rock in all kinds of different directions. So here, this uh, particular oval shape that's here, dropping the center down, shorter petals here. The longest petals, the longest petals are always out here onto the sides. That's where the oval really is. So those are long petals. As you can see, they're longer than the ones here into the back. So that's the length of that petal that's right there. And so quite a bit longer. This one that's right here is even a little bit longer. It goes right to there to right to there. And you can see that that's longer than those petals there. So the longest, when you make this oval, whenever you make an oval and you're gonna come out here and you're gonna drop the center down here for this daisy, the longest petals now are out to the side. You can shorten down the front ones you can leave a little bit longer ones into the back here, but then the longest ones are on to the side, and that causes the daisy or flower to turn. How and where you position the center is really important because you can still do that oval. You can give the whole daisy a different look by tucking that center down lower and making it look like it's coming up and out of this real deep little center here as well. So you can make that look quite a bit of difference. But the main thing is, when they're directly on, they're a circle. When they start to turn, they become more of an oval shape. And um, what was really great, many, many years ago, when I started to learn how to see this, back in the early, uh, in the early 1990s, um, Helen Van Wick t showed in one of her episodes, wonderful teacher, just a wonderful teacher. Showed in one of her episodes taking a paper plate, cutting a little wedge out of it and putting it together, and then rotating and rocking this paper plate at these different angles here, because then you can see, you know, just like if I took this white lid that's right here, as if this was this, you can see as a daisy or a flower turns, it becomes more of an oval shape here. And 
when she cut a little uh, thing out of it, turned it into a little bit more of a cone. And But you can see how this rotates. See how if you're doing something flat, and then here comes the oval. And then the more flat to the showing of just a little bit of an oval, turns it even more. So if I want this flower to turn even more, I narrow it down quite a bit here, and I put in my center. And then this flower here turns a lot more than what that flower does, turns quite a bit more. And when you're doing a good composition, the artist's job is to make an, an interesting composition so you can turn and rock and roll flowers all different kinds of ways. This is one I did several years ago. I painted this one in March of 2016, so this was five years ago. Uh, and it was just a just a bunch of daisies that I put together and I put a palette knife background onto it and was just, you know, just getting into this movement and turning. But you can see as I I really in this one don't have a daisy that is just pure flat. Even the ones that are right up here are slightly turned. But when you get into a real a casual composition like this, you don't even need to do the full daisy. You can let some of it just kind of disappear and that's what I did when I when I did this and I thought this was such a pretty this was kind of a fun pretty uh, um, composition that I ended up keeping it <laughs> it sits it actually sits in the living room of the the, the art gallery here out, uh, that we have out in Sydney it has a full house onto it also and uh, so it sits up in the, li in the living room and so I see that every day so I knew I can go up and grab that but uh Rocking and rolling and turning those flowers is just a matter of doing circles directly on and then ovals here. And then what becomes really important, where most artists make the mistake is they'll start it out as, a, as an oval. But then as you start to paint, all these petals tend to grow longer until you almost have a circle again that flattens the whole daisy out. And how do I know that? Because I did that for a long time. I did that for many years. Um, and so uh, it is, it, it's just a habit. You've got to learn how to keep within that structure of the oval. So when you're looking at it, and a great way is just go out there and start finding all kinds of photos. Look at this one here. Really a neat application. Let some of the petals here, you know, descend down on, on this one side, collapse it down, bring the center down. The oval of this of this daisy is sitting right here like that. Do you see that? Okay, then the center comes down here. And so the longest petals are really out to here, but collapsing them down here really turns that daisy quite a bit. And I love this one, turning down, going down like this and collapsing down to one side. But you can see they're ovals, okay? But that oval can be real narrow or it can be more opened up. And the more you open it up, heading towards the shape of a circle, then the uh, more round that daisy becomes, okay? So let's take a look at it here with just a little bit of paint. And then we'll go in and we'll paint a composition with them, okay? So my palette that I have out here, this is my standard. My, my daughter calls this my YouTube palette. Um, this is my Hansi Yellow, yellow uh, Darya Light Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Naphthol Red Light, Burnt Sienna, Pine Green, Thalo Blue, uh, Quinacridone Violet, Red Violet, White. I'm going to do a lot of Olaprema today, so I put out some of the... Uh, Derivan uh, uh, open medium, which keeps it nice and wet for a long time. And I have lots of videos in the Alaprama playlist. If you're wanting to know what is the difference between the open medium and the extender medium that I use both in wet on wet techniques, go over and just watch a few of the videos, the latest ones in the Alaprama uh, playlist, and I explain that to you, okay? And uh, so you can get that. But let's just take a look at Let's just take some color here and uh, we'll take a little bit of extender. Whenever I start something, I tend to start it with extender because the extender is thinner and I'm a thin to thick painter. And I'll take a little bit of my burnt sienna, a little bit of reds, a little bit of blues, all my colors here together. This is where I love to make my grays, my gray colors into stuff. I love the grays that come from these colors in here. So I'll find a nice gray then we'll lighten it up just a bit it's a nice nice pretty little gray here 
We'll add some extender here. And let's just, let's paint a daisy here that's gonna go basically an oval shape. And then we'll paint one here that'll be more of a, a straight on shape. And then we'll angle some. Let's angle one even a little bit more right out here like that here okay and then I'll blur this out a bit this is I like to start with um, colors whenever I'm going to do any kind of daisies blossoms any kinds of things I like to start colors within a few values so here I'm about two or three values darker than the background okay but I'll change that up a bit but that's normally what I like let's drop the center so if we're gonna turn something we're gonna drop the center down now if I raise the center up the petals fall down and that's okay too uh, but I generally when you're learning drop the center let's drop the center down here even a little bit more okay and then this one the center will come more in the center and that will make our daisy come at us quite a bit now, let's just take a little burnt sienna. Let's start some petaling and stuff. We'll add a, as we start our petaling and stuff, I always go with a little thicker medium. Let's go burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of the blue and green into that here. Okay, and let's add some shadow tones here to the base. And just do it casually like this. This is what I like to, I just, a little burnt sienna, a little green, a little blue here. Add a little bit of the shadow tones to it. Sometimes I will take this, add a bit of this medium, move a bit of it around the daisy center here too. Sometimes I'll push in and out. I like that whenever I'm gonna paint real casual, that I like to use my finger in there, pushing in and out. And if we're gonna paint, if you wanna paint some daisies like that into a composition, let's get real casual, okay? Now let's drop down here. We'll take some of this gray. We'll take some white into this. Let's warm this with just a touch of yellow. Here I liked them. Whenever I start to lighten up, there was very good colors, you know, that uh, Munsell, Albert uh, Henry Munsell, gave us the value scale that I use here. And he gave us this language to talk to each other. And but he's always a, he always said really basically from the mid value five as you go to six seven eight nine ten as you're adding the white in here you should also warm and that was one of the things that he said and I do believe that quite a bit let's come in here and let's just say okay we're going to put the longest petals here to a turn daisy out here onto the sides let's push in and out just a bit there okay that's the Longest petals put them out there a couple wings now go slightly as you come around here go slightly shorter and shorter here And let's just push in and out just a bit there like that as we come up here to the front pull out just a bit and Then you can pull maybe a little bit longer one there here and you can already see that this daisy is starting to turn so let's just drop a little center here. Let's just drop this out here, drop that out there, okay? That daisy's starting to turn there just a bit. Let's come back up over to this one here, a little bit of medium here. Longest one's gonna be right out to here. Let's go a little lighter, Dave, so it looks like you know what you're doing here. A little yellow. So I'm just gonna hold the brush flat and just drag that in. Let's just drag that one out there like that push out just a bit so I get a bit of that movement. I like to have that movement in and out. Now let's keep this quite a bit shorter here, here right there. And so you can see the quite a the little bit shorter movement that I have here with that causes this daisy to turn even more. And I can just put on a mark or two like this right up into the front to really cause that daisy to turn. And let's explore this a bit more light right up there okay and now for the flat one here up into the front all of the petals I generally will though I will generally make them a little bit different but majority of these petals now are all going to go the same length out and uh, I generally collapse one side or something like that a little bit for more interest but you can kind of see that now and those of you that have watched some of my other videos when I paint daisies, you know, it is a process. It's I paint the petals two, three times in each in each each time 
uh, changing the tone slightly, changing my structure slightly, so I start to get more interest in everything to my daisies. Now here, I can completely change this. These are the two wing petals that on a turn daisy that are the most important. And that's what you, really what you want to do is separate and is put that. And then I can really change the look of this daisy just by how much stroking and streaking I leave to these back petals. Or sometimes I will shift from that to a pull down this way to make a daisy, a petal here like this that you see and it sinks the center in so you pull it back down that way you're you're an artist and an artist basically what we like to do as an artist is we we like to create this beautiful composition and we do that we don't want all of our daisies when you're painting a set of daisies for them all to look the same and so you want to try a variety and that's why I put out all these photos of these daisies out in front of you and try to uh, you know find some different ways like I may come up here and like with that one that I showed you you know and and put up a nice little petal here and then just let this whole side here just kind of fall away and then that daisy looks completely different from that one which looks completely different from that one and this one that's right here maybe I I turn this petal up just a bit here change that and now the whole position so the shadow would come here at the bottom here but now the whole movement of that daisy and the way that daisy goes changes you see and the the beautiful thing again what you want to do what you want to strive for as an artist is to get this variation of your colors and everything in there and your strokes and your shapes we'll put in a little soft yellow oxide here and onto the bigger daisies up into the front or something I will put in some little corner of my Hansa yellow. You'll see me paint that. We'll go paint some fun little flowers here in just a minute. And so I'll put that on higher contrast flowers. I'll add more shadows and stuff like that to it. So, and it's the shadows that become really important because the petals are light. So as I increase the shadows, like I'm increasing the burnt sienna here, I'm increasing the contrast of that flower. So if you really want your petals and stuff to show up, always remember this. It is the contrast against that main object or the main interest object of that daisy is the petals. And so you don't get the contrast. You don't make pretty high contrast daisies by pounding in white and putting on white and putting on white. You put on dark so that it contrasts the light. So you need more dark. Sometimes I'll put a little, you know, a little what I call a crater up into the center. I call them crater daisies. Put a little, uh, you know, a center up into that. And, you know, you can tap on some heavier lights. But what really gives them their interest is the dark. So see, that center is not easy. And even though this is the same lightness as here, that daisy recedes a little bit more because it doesn't contain the dark that these uh, these other ones are you know, are having here. And so, yeah, we'll put out a few little uh, marks of uh, fun little leaves and stuff here and uh, coming out and stuff. And you can make just fun little practices. Fun just to take little boards like this and practice. Practice your strokes. Practice your turning of the flowers here. Say, okay, I want to bring some more interest in here. Well, you know, what's one of the techniques I show you guys all the time with the roses? The petal edging technique. Put a nice edge right there onto the front of that daisy and boom, up comes the front of that daisy. Let's put one right in here. Boom. There, I bring out more of this side of that of that daisy. I can take some of the dark right over here. I can compress down and press and soften down this side. We'll put in just a little bit of movement here up onto that side there. And so I soften out that side, increase the pressure onto this side, and it comes out even more. But what if I wanted to pull your eye away from that into this one, you know, think, I, I love to test you guys like this, so start thinking like, okay, how would I do that? I can increase dark, I can increase contrast, I can increase negative painting 
with any kinds of my darker colors in here like this. And as I start to increase more dark, like one of my favorites you see me do in all the roses and stuff like that, is to increase my darks right around with negative painting, right around my center of interest here. And as I increase the darks, I pull your eye away from that one right down into that one. And we can have a few other little lines of the darks and stuff like that. But you can see how I slowly increase the contrast. It's all good rules of color. Okay. It's like I, I was re I, I love to read all of your comments and I do, you know, all the time. There um, are some of them that are not so nice that I, you know, but I love to read your comments. And I read one this morning and I was answering comments and reading it. She, she said, you're just so frustrated I can't get it. Now, frustration comes from a bunch of different things. But frustration will come mostly from your habits your own individual habits. And as you're learning to paint something and paint something new and visualize it in a new way, you've got to break those habits. And there's there's going to be frustration. If there's not frustration, guys, you're not learning anything. Then I haven't taught you anything. Does that make sense? So learn, and it's what I tell all my students, and I've told you this in so many other videos, learn to embrace frustration. I love it. Because that means I am pushing myself to do something completely new and I'm about to really grow as an artist. Okay, I've just got to find my way. I've got to find that. And there's an answer to it. And if you don't know the answer to it, come over to our, our MeWe group, post your photo. We have a bunch of teachers over there. We'll help you. Or ask me the question on it and stuff like that. But if you want to show your work, which is the easiest way, go post that and, and we'll do that and we can help you but learn to embrace frustration okay and because that's the, that's a natural part of learning all right let's paint a composition let's start right from the very beginning so i went out i went out and i'm really lucky right back over through that door you can barely see over there goes into the next room which i have a nice big frame shop so i just cut myself a board and made myself a frame this morning for it and decided okay i'm going to do this if i'm going to show you guys something i create a painting because we're a selling studio here we're a selling gallery and so that's what i need to do so i made a nice uh, a nice board here it's about 18 inches here and it's about um so it's about twice as long as it is here uh uh, twice as, as long as it is high here. So I'm going to do a nice narrow little composition here and of some flowers and stuff right in here. So we'll do some daisies, maybe some blossoms and stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll go up that way with it. Okay, so what I want to do, and I put it into a nice frame. And one of the things I showed you, and it was so nice of a couple of you to comment on there, you know, thanks for showing the frame. I did this in a, a couple videos ago. I showed you the frame, and I showed you how to design within a frame. And so the frame that I'm going to do here, now this isn't going to be the color of the frame. I always tell you I leave this at the end of the painting to do some glazing of some color here. But uh, so I'm going to come right into here, but the frame itself, the, 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 the frame itself does control basically the width of what our daisies and stuff are going to be in here, our daisies and blossoms and stuff. So I'm just going to take a little dirty color here. I love the sketch with some burnt sienna and I know this is the width of my frame. So I know my first, uh, first kind of daisy or blossom flower it has to be a little bit bigger than that and so I'm going to make that one right about that size. So I'm going to put out here uh, some of my uh, some of my other flowers here so so I can just say okay yeah I can rock and roll. See I love this one and so that one might make a a, a really nice flower down here. Now what I do is I tend to make a formal area so I don't want to make it right exactly into the center. I usually like a maybe to make it grow up here just a bit. So let's drop one right here and then I'm gonna I'm gonna position this one. See, and that's what you can do. Take some of these daisies like this and say, oh okay, I kind of like the position of that dropping down right about there like that. That's kind of a nice. So that'll grow up, you know, that way there. Um, maybe we have we're gonna have some yellow blossoms and Maybe we'll put a little blossom up there and one up here. I know you can't quite see that. It's fantastic, though. <laughs> it's 
I'll, I'll show you when we get into the painting here. But uh, let's just put maybe some angled ones back through here. We'll rock and roll. And we'll leave some room here for some of our stems. I think stems, myself within a composition, stems to me are really important because they first they start the first line of movement up through your composition. Okay, so we'll push. That'll give me the size of the flowers that I want to concentrate on. I could add and fill in some other ones here, but uh, that'll give me basically the size that I want to concentrate on here. Now. Let's uh, kind of decide. So we have this on here. We have some ovals. We have a nice, not quite a, a full circle of one coming, you know, directly on. This could be a daisy. This could be a blossom. This could be anything. Um, and then we can put some smaller buds and stuff out here. We're going to put a line of movement up this way here. And so usually what I do, you know, is, is I sit down and I start to say, okay, what are we going to do? Are we going to do this more contemporary? We're going to do it, you know, something like this where we're moving some of that color into the background. And if we're going to add some of these background strokes, you can look through all my videos there. One of the things that I, I do some very contemporary stuff where the power of the stroke in the background is really quite, quite heavy and quite a bit. And so, and I do like that. And so what I start to decide is, do I want to have something like that? You know, do I want to have some of that color? Now, I really like blues and violets, cooler colors into the backgrounds. They sell really well for me. People like them. And uh, so that's always a good consideration for me. But we're artists. We want to do some things that are different. And then before, the the next thing I do before I go start this harm and just how much power I want to be is some of the colors of my flowers. I'm going to do some white ones with maybe some yellow. Yellow to maybe some violets into that. Maybe we'll put some violets into the the daisies here, like an African daisy. I used to have those all over my my uh, house out in California. And the African daisies and uh, that are white and purple and stuff. Beautiful, beautiful flower. Um, and so I start to think. These are the things that I'm starting to think about. So, you know, I'm thinking... You know, if I come in here, that's a daisy. Maybe maybe I make this one, you know, like yellows and whites and violets, you know, moving through. And I don't like to just alter flowers, you know, alternate flowers, but I like to move them through. So if I put yellow there, maybe I'll put yellow up through there. And I start, sometimes this is how I start my composition, is I'm just kind of deciding. And my point for getting this is sometimes you don't have enough flowers. Now, I used to always teach just to add more flowers if you need more color. But now, now I also use the background. So if I sit there and say, well, I want to do a lot of pretty violet daisies here, and I'm only going to have a couple yellows here, then maybe yellow needs to go into my background so I can carry that. Does that make sense? So my background, my, my thoughts, and this is after this whole long explanation, which I'm sorry about, my thought is, when I simplify down and don't have as many flowers, my background becomes more important. Does that make sense? That's where I start to carry colors into my background. For like into this one here, I wanted to have a lot of color interest. My background carries a lot, a lot of light, uh, a nice color, but it carries violets quite heavy right where they're going to play against some of these yellows. And so that might become part of a consideration. So you might see me do something like this. If this is a strong vertical right through here, I would come in with my background and just go bang like this with some yellow, just like that. This is how I approach contemporary painting. Some yellow like this. Now there's no problem with yellow moving anywhere in this painting. Does it stay there in that particular, you know, that much? I don't know. But it starts out that way. If I feel it might be too much, I'll soften it just a bit here with, I, this is why I love my paper towel. But yellow becomes a consideration here in the painting. Now yellow is moved through the painting. And now maybe we'll take just a soft violet, some, some red violet, which I like, a little bit of blue here. And uh, takes it over towards these nice violets here which is a real pretty color here. I'll add some white to it. If I want it to tone down, soften down, I'll add any kind of gray 
or yellow. See how this, you can see how it's bright here and see how it's graying down as I add some of these other colors from my palette here, becoming softer here. And let's just push a bit of this through here, which I like. And we'll push a strong vertical here. And may, so you, maybe as this becomes more of an accent, all depends, you know, if I'm doing a, you know, a commission piece or something like that. Some of my customers really want to see a lot of violets. They like violets. Maybe I'll put a little bit of this more powerful violet right into here. There is a thought, and look at what it does. Boom, here comes in some of this color right in through here. And I can use that. Maybe I'll slide this over to a little more softer blue. There's a thousand ways to do this. And how do you know I was well, how do you know how to do that? How do you know how do you know as an artist to go there and do that? Well, I'm playing with the compliments. I'm playing I'm adding colors that are going to be in my composition into my painting. And the next thing is I'm just giving it a try. That's what you got to do, guys. That's what you got to do. It's just a bit of paint and a board, okay? And I'm just playing with some of these colors. Now, and this is the other thing. You may think, oh my God, I don't really like that. I, this has happened to me a thousand times. I, I don't like that. And then I go post it on social media and people go, I just absolutely love it. Don't ever just, you know, this inside artist is very, very important. You listen to it a lot. But if it's in the colors that you're not really used to, and violet's not really my thing, then, uh, you know, you might, uh, you might learn to... Uh, just give it a go and, and see what other people say about it. So there's a nice pretty little blue. And so if I put this and leave some of this blue here and this stroke and streak and touch of color here, then um, I might have to put some of that into my daisies. So there we got a nice, and you know, this will, that'll frame up pretty nice. We've got a nice, just a little touch of the color. Here. Sometimes in the long ones you see me pull the blue, you know, here I pulled the blue in a long, powerful vertical. Many times you see me pull that horizontal here, which gives you a little bit different of a feeling. Like I can just take this slight horizontal, or this slight angle here like this, and just disrupt that powerful vertical a little bit with this, and it just breaks up that, that area a little bit. That's, a, that's an artistic choice, and that's a whole nother painting. You know, that's how you make all these different paintings. Okay, let's go back to some grays. I've got some violet out here. So let's get a little yellow into that. Let's get a little green and blues here. Some of our reds here. Let's get some nice grays out here. Add a bit of white. Some nice dirty grays. Let's go ahead and make this one an oval shape here. Boy, that's just about the background color. Go ahead and use your background color again. Oh, the background color, original background color is my favorite one. It's the yellow, white, and a little bit of black. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll see. Well, let's push this right up here. Might be a little bit of a blossom up there. Okay. Let's change that. Let's make this a little bit more blue here. This gray, a little more blue, so we get a little difference here. Blue and red. The naphtha red light and the thalo blue, just beautiful grays here. That's better. We'll push some of that in. Push some of that into that one right up through there. Let's push this. I love that one turn daisy. So we'll kind of push that one in just a bit there and get some of that one. That's that one. We want to put something like that one right down there. Kind of like that one. So I'll set that right there so we can keep an eye on it, okay? Now, we'll go ahead and set the center down low, a little bit down low here. I hit some of that burnt sienna that there, so we'll, we'll drop that in there. This center is going to come in right about in here, burnt sienna and yellow here. That'll set the center. Let's set some yellows. Let's just take all three of our yellows here, kind of model them together. And we'll paint a yellow blossom right in here. Maybe a little bit of an oval shape. So it's not a complete round circle. This will give us some a different flower, a nice yellow blossom here. We'll put a little bit of yellow out into here. 
And uh, let's do, since we have yellow and it's carrying through there, let's do this one as a turned daisy as well. And see, I'm just brushing it into a kind of the oval shape here, just like that, okay? And that's kind of neat. That one rocks and rocks out like this. And like I said before, we could take and put a smaller little yellow blossom or something like that, but we don't want to fill up too much. We want to leave some negative space into this design. All right, so we have our grays. We have some of our our nice uh, violets here, which is something we could, this is what I do. I just kind of play and add some of the colors into some of that just to model it all up. I'm I'm a big, I'm a big advocate for just moving color around here. Let's take some of our burnt sienna and let's drop that right about in here. And see, those will be at the, and here's where I start to say, well, that's not so hot there because those are about at the same angle right there and there. So let's change this slightly, and it's easy to change it. I don't like them to, I don't like two flowers to come up next to each other that are right at the same angle here. So let's change the width of it right here, like that. So the, it'll come up right about in there. And sometimes when I'm making a correction like this, I just wanted to show you how to make a mistake and correct it. But if I'm making a correction to my first thought is I'll go in and put in a little contrast or a little contrast dark and help reshape it so I can see the shape of where that downside is and, and how those are rocking and rolling here just a bit. Get some of those stems going on in there here. Okay, we'll drop one right in there like that. And I leave it very, very loose. See, it's easy for me to change stuff because I'm not doing anything important yet. And I'm using just extender here right now. Here. Here we go. Just drop a few of these lines in like that. Very, very casual. Okay, we got a long ways to go, but it starts to come together a little bit. Let's put a little more contrast to the low side, a little more burnt sienna. Just tap that into both. That'll be a nice common color between both flowers. That's going to give a nice little little dose of harmony here. We'll just drop a little bit into that. When they're probably going to cover that up, probably going to do those as little blossoms, So, but we'll see. And this nice little angled here little bit of the center dropping down low drop the center down lower so we can get some reaching petals here there we go all right now let's go in more casual a little warmer right into here we're just going to go right into this violets and gray this is a beautiful color and it's real close to my background when i mix those all together it's real close to my background it'd be a nice nice new paper towel. It'll be a nice color to kind of start some of these daisies out. Now don't go too white. We want to be able to get so keep it right up here around a seven, no more than maybe an eight here. Let's put the wings on first here. That's the long that kind of turns it a bit, right? We know that 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 flower just kind of turns there like that. Just a bit break. You can push in and out some of that movement. This is the first go at the daisy. So we want to paint casual. So you, now we want to do not reach too far. You see your oval right here. So don't reach too far here. Keep this kind of flat, kind of narrow here like that. These will come out here and maybe one comes out here right in there like that and that starts your daisy turning. And I can turn it a little bit more by compressing that back. See if I compress this back a bit, that daisy turns a little bit more. And this is what I'll be looking at in my composition, how I want it to turn. Let's take some of this gray and violet, go up here, hit the wings, the side wings here first, pull in or out. And I like to vary it there. Okay, that sets the position. We'll go a little bit shorter here in and out and maybe here just right across the top here like that right across the front just pulling it across maybe just a little bit of the line there so the daisies look different and they're turning see 
Everything is turning. These are the important ones, these long wing petals here. That's what causes it to turn. That's what, where the turning of the daisy comes from. Let's, um, up here to the top here, yeah, let's just uh, do more of a blossom since I have some turned ones here. We'll do more of a blossom. This, it's not completely opened up. Maybe it's a little bit to the back there to finish that off. And, you know, sometimes we're just going to leave this composition very open. We don't need a whole bunch of stuff to it, you know. Sometimes I always feel like, oh, there's a new open space. Fill it up. <laughs> you don't want to do that always. You want to... Designs need a certain amount of what we call negative space to breathe, to get that interest in there, okay? So my natural habit is if there's a space, fill it up. Put a leaf in it or something. Fill it up. But I don't want to do that too often here. Now, let's take a look at this one. So this one's going to have, instead of coming right out here to the side, it's going to have this bigger one right out just about that angle there. And that's nice. And then so we'll start to pull some out like that. Short little ones here, kind of turned, just like that. So this one will be very much different here, like that. Coming right around that center there. That's going to be kind of fun here. And now, so I'll let those uh, those rest there for just a second. Sometimes I'll take some of this color and just drop a, a little bit of that tone out there like that. And see, that kind of, especially if I come in here and say, okay, well, that kind of looks like a daisy that's turned there. Maybe just a little bit of a light here like that makes it look like a light little petal. And so you're just giving the impression in this whole yellow area of a little daisy sitting in there. You know, and, and that could uh, happen just like that. Doesn't need anything more than that. Let's come back in and let's take some of our Darulite and our Hansa here. Let's make more of a, and I touched into that. These might be, <laughs> I touched into that red by mistake. These might become orange blossoms instead here. But uh, let's, we're gonna do these more flat here. So we'll do these more flat here and maybe a little bit wider. So it just turns a little bit here. Push in and out. Forgot to add that open medium to it and I feel that. I like to add the open medium. This is gonna keep it wet for a little bit as we paint this, okay? Let's go up here to the top here, right up here to the top, and we'll just stroke in a bit of that just to say we did it. Maybe a, a bit of that right over here for turning. See, a little bit of that red coming out. It's not too bad. We might just push a bit. Look at that. That's kind of pretty, making that orange. Happy accident. <laughs> you just go with it. So, you know, that orange might be, instead of that violet, that orange might be kind of pretty just hitting inside of these. Sometimes an accident becomes a technique and then it really sells for a lot of money. It just happens. This is why I love about painting, is you gotta have fun. You gotta have fun. And I know that's frustrating sometimes for you, those that are learning. I know it gets in there and it's frustrating. You watch me do this sometimes it's so easy and everything. But you see, I'm making mistakes and I'm just powering through it. Like I just made a mistake with an orange and I just power right on through it. It's pain. Just power right on through it and just keep on going and add that to it. And somebody's going to go, wow, I love that orange <laughs> in there. It's going to happen, you know. But uh, anyway, so I just got this nice soft little yellow blossom there. And that looks pretty good. Let's take a little Hansa and that and those colors and a little bit of white down here. Let's put in a, a, a bit more of an edge to a, a petal here. I don't want to lose all that. White is dangerous because you start adding white, you can opaque really easy. So I don't want to lose some of that intensity there. But I want to add some pretty little petals there like that. And see what I'm doing is... I'm touching out here and then I'm just pulling in and lifting off so that I'm just running that color into that center a little bit. The most important thing here, guys, is this when you're painting these pretty little petals like that, is that push in and out, that little bit of movement in and out of that center. 
that's where it's going to pretty. Now, you know, like I told you before, you can rise up and put a little extra paint on the, the edge of a petal, you know, on the edge and do that petal edging kind of technique there. You know, we can pick up a little more light here. Pull this out a bit more here. Right, like this. And I'll sit back and I'll look at that movement. I'll probably adjust it here a little bit. It's not absolutely perfect like I want it, but you know, it's a, it's a good start. Let's go back and add just a touch or a movement or so of that. Right up here, maybe a bit more of the lighter color here. Right up there like that. And you, you just need impressions. Maybe a just an impression of an edge. Sometimes when I come back out through here, I'll just make the impression of an edge, like there's an edge of a flower or something there, you know, and uh, that's all it needs. It doesn't need to be a perfect flower. It just needs a little bit. Let's put an edge right back here. We'll turn this like this. Make sure that these wings get a little bit longer. That's what turns the flower. And maybe even to just some yellow oxide back here at the back and let that just kind of die down, kind of disappear back there. And we'll see. And, we'll, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's take a bit more of that red orange. Let's just add that right into the center of that flower. I'm kind of liking that color into this composition. A bit of that. Here, move the color. One of the things I always tell you is if you add a color or make a color, move the color. That's the most important. We'll grab a little burnt sienna here right on the corner. Tap that around a bit. That gives you some more of that additional contrast, right? We want that eye to come right into here. So we're painting a little contrast here. Just a bit of it. Not too much out onto this one. We want it to kind of fade away. Let's put a bit of that red, just a touch. Here we go. Any kind of violet, if I want to restate that a bit, blue. These violets are real nice to have, especially into that daisy. Maybe a touch into there. You, if you're doing the African daisy, it's quite a bit more and it goes out onto the petals and stuff. But I think that just a nice little touch there. It moves through it's kind of pretty might even uh, just grab some of that color here and just move that out this is this is the this is the impressionism of it that I like you know the movement of some of those colors out see and it would be nice to have a nice little dose of that right in there boom just come down and you get this, you get these ideas. Some people always ask me, where do you get those ideas? Or, oh, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. All these ideas come from me just sitting down at the end of my day, usually. And I said this in one of the last videos. At the end of my day, they were asking me, how do you save your, your, your paint? And I always say, I put them in either into little cups, or what I do is I sit down with another board, and I just play with the color trying all kinds of different color techniques and brushes and what happens to the background. And that gives me all kinds of ideas for when I sit down and do the next painting. So, and it works for me. It's just something that's worked for me for a long time. I like doing this. So I'm going to take a little bit of this violet. And I'm using extender when I'm working the background here. I use extender so that the colors stay a little bit weaker than what the painting does. So now you see I'm adding those colors. It's a little bit... A little bit bare up there so let's just add a bit right up in there just a bit of that nice movement right off there just like that that's kind of pretty maybe just a touch of that color that nice violet look what happens when we push some of that right into our center of interest especially right around this yellow flower it just starts to add more boom right inside there makes it really look like you know what you're doing okay and it's, it's just movement of color. That's all I'm thinking right now is moving my color, creating these colors, moving it, trying different things, okay? 
All right, let's go back to our daisies. Let's revisit our daisies. They're still nice and wet. I'm going to add a little more open medium. Go up in value a little bit. Start heading up the chain here. Adding a little yellow so that it keeps that nice warmth to it. Okay. And let's get a nice boom petal right out here. Just pull out a bit. You know, that could be a little bit lighter. You could either revisit it again or get real brave with some texture and just hit it. There, that's kind of pretty. There, let's touch right out here. Just boom, let's just pull out those nice, longer, slightly longer wing strokes there, like that. Smaller strokes now, smaller out here, so they're not quite as far. Push in and out. Sometimes I'll push it out and let it just kind of disappear right there. Okay, one up. I want to travel your eye up and through, so I'm going to lighten that with a bit more white right there. And that's my thought, is I just want to travel your eye. I want your eye, boom, pointing you right up there to that one. So I'll go a little more white, a little bit lighter here. And you notice I don't always use, on the second time I come back to hit something, I don't always use exactly the same stroke. That's what makes the daisies a little bit more lively here so that they they don't have exactly the same stroke and I'm pushing in and out and just creating see that's a nice little faded edge over there this I'm not too wild about that much of the shadow there I could come back in if you want to see that definition and there's just a thousand ways but let's pick up a bit on that edge and let's just draw that edge just a bit there and see that drawing of that edge brings your eye so your eye is coming back up this way a bit. That look, that worked kind of nice. Let's keep that nice warm lighter yellow here. Let's just pull in some that. Take a look at that one again here. Pull out maybe a little more of the chisel here. So I don't always use the flat of the brush. I rotate the brush here to use the chisel sometimes to get more interest here vary it a bit here and I like these real light little touch edges of the petals here on that side there it really makes the daisy turn quite a bit more maybe a bit more light just a little hit of it right there don't pull the whole thing just little tiny hits I always call them the sparks of color the sparks of light there now that's a mistake in there and again, I'm showing you how to correct it later. <laughs> it's, you know, those little mistakes, guys, happen all the time. I laugh myself through it because I can fix it. It's just paint. How are you going to do is, you know, I'm going to just come back, back it back out with a little bit of my yellow oxide. Well, that's kind of pretty. Maybe add a bit of the orange burnt sienna contrast back up in there again. Just a little more color back up in there like that. And, you know, we're going to eventually go up to this little Hansa here. Right up in there like that. That's a pretty little color going in there. And I'll probably add them a little bit more, you know. You can even go into, like this, you can see on the more mature ones, they get more of the greenish kind of centers and stuff in there. You can go to that as well. I'm just going to add a little bit more of that light. But what is it that makes the daisy uh, really pop off? Is it the light or is it the dark? It's the dark. So we'll just add a bit more of this dark right in there like that. And see how that just comes to life a bit more. Yeah, just a touch more of that right in there like that. That's kind of nice. That looked like we knew what we were doing there. Let's add a bit of that dark right in there. Ooh, a bit of that violet would be pretty right in there as well. Boom, look at that little violet touch. That's kind of pretty. Then we'll go in, let's go with some Darulite and some Hansa right in here like this. And we'll just lightly stipple this just a bit with the corner of our brush. And then I'll use, I'll go back as I go out towards the flat so the stippling is softer as I move away from that center. And I'll revisit that again with some more Hansa. And I just start to watch it as I build the center there. How much of this do I want to keep out? and use these little angles 
and it can be overdone really easy. Now, the other thing about this, you know, when you're doing centers like this, turn and roll and rock your brush a little bit. Don't just go dap, 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 dap. You'll get the same mark. See how all my marks are a little bit different? And that is because I'm turning and rotating and using my brush a little bit different. So it's using, it's applying different kinds of marks to those, okay? All right. So I like all that. I, I feel like I need to have a bit more clarity to this front center petal. So I'm going to take some of my yellows, add some of my medium. We'll grab some light here. Nice little light, the edge there. See, that's not modeled. It's modeled. It's not mixed. And I'm going to just use that edge there, just like that. And I push down so that... See, and I'm actually physically building the pedal, and that edge holds that. Do you see that? Builds that edge. That's the pedal edging technique we show you on the roses and stuff. And so I can build this blossom a little bit more, just picking up that little edge. And it's just a little bit there. I'll build that in. That edge now right up here. Maybe I want that edge a little bit heavier right here so it goes and comes up and competes against that blossom on the, the daisy there just a bit like that and we'll flip that edge over to this side give this just a bit of an edge here maybe just an edge there and it's not it's not perfectly round like I had kind of intended it but I'm really liking it so I'm not going to play with it too much there. Kind of like that little blossom there. I like that going up that way. Let's get a bit of yellow oxide into this nice center like that. Then model our two Hansa and Dargy light together. Use that corner, rotate it around a bit, tap it around so it's not all the center. Then we'll go up to our Hansa a little bit more pure maybe even some texture in it. Hit the top side up here with that. And that's kind of fun. Now, how do I make that even more contrast? Don't keep pounding that yellow in there. It'll all become the same. Head to your darks. If you want to contrast that center, do it through your darks, not through your lights. It is the dark that makes the light look light. If you keep pounding on light color, it'll all become flat and the same. Now I can soften some of that too, just right up to those edges. And that's what I start to look at too when I'm painting daisies is, you know, how much softness do I want to have? And textures, I really like to get texture up into the front up here, like right in there. Love those textures. And if I feel like I, I destroyed some of that shadow right in there, and because I just took it out a little bit, I'll put a little dark in my brush and just lift some of it out. And it puts in that nice shadow here, just like that. So now we got a nice little going up here. Back up here, what's the first thing? Yellow oxide, a little heavier. Okay, then right into both our yellows, right in the corner, turn your brush. Let that fusion brush just do its thing. Let that soft corner give you that and make sure you move it around so it's not all the same. Put a little heavier right there like that. That's a pretty little bit there. Just like that. Okay. And uh, maybe up here we'll take a little yellow, yellow green here and we'll put in a soft calyx here. Just the idea of a calyx. I don't need to have something absolutely perfect. Now I might just come in, just pinch wipe that. Sometimes if I go in green to the yellow, I'll just put a little extender and just wipe it out of my brush. I don't want to go to water. Remember when we're all the Prima painting or you're wet on wet painting like this, you don't want to introduce water anywhere onto this palette. You'll dry your paints, okay? So, and you notice everything is staying, everything here is wet. Do you see that? I'm an hour, basically, you know, into not quite an hour into this painting, but... 50 minutes or so into this painting, everything is just wet, staying nice and wet. And it's because I'm watching my painting here. Okay, now let's come back here, 
take a little bit of our light and white and some of our yellows here. Let's just add in a little bit like this is a turned, like an idea of a turned flower here. This is the impressionism that I really like. I'm not going to build a flower in there. I'm just going to give the impression of a flower there. Maybe a real soft yellow burnt sienna. Just the idea of a center. Maybe just a whisper of that dark there. Just like that. And it gives it just the impression of that just fading away over there. And that works. I can do the same thing down over here. And just a whisper of that burnt sienna in there is enough. Maybe I'll go through and soften this one just a bit more. Sometimes I'll pull out because it gives me a different look to the flower. Here. There we go. Just like that. So I've got a nice soft one there. Just going to fade right into the background. There. Now I can build up more if I decide, mm, do I want to, do I want this flower to compete against that daisy here? And I might because my eye jumps just a little bit from this daisy to that daisy there. So I'll take my yellows and some open medium here. Let's get some white, a little bit lighter yet. And we'll increase the light right up here just a bit right up into these center petals. Just a touch more, a little bit more interest right up here. Right here, so the, maybe just a bit more here. I did it that side, so let's just build a little bit. I don't want to lose that petal edge, but just a little more light right through, and kind of like through here, I'll just touch this outside right through the center there. And it just lightens the, fl the blossom a little bit more. Now that blossom has some additional power up against these other daisies here. And that works. We'll tone this one down a little bit with our grays. Just a bit. Here, a little light and gray. Here, just push some of that around. You're almost going to see, if you give it something that like, looks kind of like a green stem and everything there, people are going to see it as a, uh, they're going to see it as a calyx. You don't need to get in there and paint anything perfect. Be impressionism with it. That's, you know, it, it doesn't need to get in and paint realism. Okay. Now let's go, let's get into some of our greens here. Nice yellow greens. So some Hansa. This, let's get some open medium into this. Let's try a little bit more powerful yellow green here. I'm going to take a little bit of that extra color off of my brush here. And let's just see what some of this, and I'm just going to move it around a bit here. And I'm going to be very impressionist. I'm not going to make perfect leaves. Now I could, like I could pick an area right here like this. Let's, if I'm going to go here and I want it to reduce down, I don't want to use that. I want to go back down and thin it back down with some of my, and I might even want a little burnt sienna in that. So let's come right down here. Let's thin it out because we're, if you want the, to have less, see right back in here has got a receding edge to this. It's getting more transparent. So I don't want to go in there with a powerful leaf. It will destroy the back edge of that daisy. So I'm going to thin it out. So it's not going to have as much power. And we'll put one or two little leaves right out here like this. Boom, boom. And then we'll let them sit for a second. And then we'll remove some of it. Just pull back right through it there. And soften those edges and let that... That's... I just love that kind of impressionism with it. You know, just so I just remove it. And so I don't need that much. Maybe a touch more green and... Burnt sienna, a little more contrast, like right up in here. Boom, there's some contrast. See, those those marks of contrast. Do you like that much? You know, move through a bit. Take some of it off. You know, maybe I want to have just a touch of that contrast right in there. That pulls your eye in here. Maybe a touch of that contrast right up here. That's up to you. How much contrast? I'm going to add extender 
to this so that I keep it soft. Here, boom, boom, boom. Here, let's keep it kind of soft. Just do a little bit of brush. Remember, I need some green right in through here. Boom, right in there like that. And just kind of take that off a bit. Maybe a, a touch of the dark. Sometimes I'll just touch that dark as a little shadow right up against that edge there. So it's, you know, it, you could put a shadow against there, but then I'm starting to really, you know, I'm not losing the back edge of that daisy. So I'm, that's an artistic, you know, that's your look. You You decide, you know, so... And so I'll just add a little bit more. Now, sometimes back down into this area, I like a little bit of a brighter yellow green to come up down towards some of this. I, I firm believer, change your greens. Don't get to, don't get so in love with just one color of green. You want to really change up your greens. Nice light yellow green. Let me get this a little more power. Nice light yellow green here. And hit a few of those areas there. And that open medium just gives it enough body, but yet a little bit of transparency, which is nice. And we'll add just a few little takeaways right out here. Just little marks, just little brush marks of some of those colors down like that. And that's kind of pretty. It's kind of a, now, you know, you can decide, you know, I come back, I'm going to give my brush a good rinse. When you're painting all the primer and stuff, after you rinse that out, make sure you go poke in some extender and work that into your brush so that water comes out of that brush. You don't want to introduce that into your paint. You'll dry them faster. Okay, all right, so maybe just a touch more of that light texture right there, which I like. Sometimes I come in and I make little sparks of color, and I like that little sparks of light, you know, which are kind of fun to have here. Boom. And see some of these blossom petals here a little bit more and it might be a bit too much so I'll put a little yellow just work it back and forth a bit but I like like I like to do this I like those wet edges of that green and yellow to push together there like that and just kind of it's I don't call it blended I call it blurring I'm actually blurring the petal edge out into the other colors there and that's what I like but it's kind of nice if we just want to have these little spark ed sparks of color and edges there that work out real nice maybe a bit of the yellow pushing in and out of here that's still nice and wet so a little bit of that green on my finger that was intentional okay <laughs> not it's not one of those little accents but boy it really looks good doesn't it so now you're dressing your finger in green and going in there. It just sometimes nice dirty little finger just adds some nice stuff. Look at that little green. That's nice. Yeah, that that works. And we'll push a little bit right in there. That's become a new technique. <laughs> you know, that's what you do sometimes. Okay, so I like that. Now the question is, you know, a lot of times I start to look at this back into the uh the frame, you know, back into here, into the frame, and do I need to spark it, uh, you know, and I start to look at it and stuff, do I need to, you know, spark it and, and push it up, um, you know, here I've got a nice medium beige on the edge of the frame, and uh, I would probably go through and, and darken that just a, a little bit more, so, you know, and I, I do love varieties and versions of burnt sienna and sometimes if I, I sit there and I go well you know I'm going to make this a little darker and you know softer and darker here um, 
maybe I uh, add a little bit more dark into the uh, center of the composition as well. So I do that as well. A little bit of this dark burnt sienna green. Sometimes I, and it's like I showed you on some of the last frames, especially if I'm painting, if I'm painting uh, very impressionistic like this, uh, I like to wipe the frame down with the paper towel and create kind of a, a glazing type of effect on it. And I think that that adds a lot. So I'll just mix some of this up. Green, burnt sienna. That's a kind of a pretty color. I'll work that with some uh, with some of this uh, extender medium here so it stays really wet for quite a long time. And that'll give me time to uh, wipe it down, work it down like this, add some of this, almost like an antiquing, but it's really technically a glazing. And uh, sometimes I would take a you know, a light color, for example, a light color like a lighter yellow or something like that, and work that back into the frame here through the center part after I do some of that glazing. That creates a, a really a three-tone frame here, which is kind of nice. Gives it a different a different look, you know. We're always looking for, you know, different kinds of looks here. And um, so that's kind of neat, too. There. And uh, just boom. And I like the frames to, you know, really, so I'll, I'll push some of that on. And I like the frames to really kind of take on their own kind of uh, character, you know, with them. And so, uh, yeah, I just push these colors around. And, you know, it's I don't try to make, in other words, I don't always try to make it match. All the sides match exactly or stuff. I like variations. Like, I may come out here, yeah, I did that, and push some more of this. And maybe, uh, you know, sometimes on like some of my bigger frames, I'll just touch a little green in every once in a while. And so the viewer picks up this little bit of green, which is quite nice. And so the whole frame really takes on a its own movement like you have in the background. In other words, it's not a perfect, precise frame. You know, like you go and, and buy one that's antiqued or something like that, and, you know, it has all these perfect little edges and everything, and the colors are, you know, nice, and they're all the same going all the way around. I don't, sometimes I, especially into an Alla Prima painting, I don't like that. I like to have little variations. So little color spots of green and some of the light colors and stuff off of the off of the uh, the daisies and stuff like that for me they they add a lot and usually what I do is I put this up onto my easel and I sit back and I start building a frame with glazes that I like that really goes with the painting maybe a bit of that light right through there it doesn't have to be perfect. Just some of that light going through here. Just another tone going through. But I did like a few touches of that green in there, that as well. Just showing up through. See, just whisper it on. Just let it, sh just a bit of that show up and, and through. And it makes a nice, uh, I'll try to hold this in. Everything's nice and wet here, but uh, makes a nice, uh, you know, kind of a frame for it there to get some of the different colors and stuff. But I'd sit back and and I just start to glaze it like this, just making the frame part of the painting. And you know, and you, your job here is, you know, is it going to frame it and contain it, or you know, what's your what's your real goal? So here you see I have more contrast on that one than I did into there. And that's up to you. Do you want to put some more contrast in? Do you want to, you know, do some different things there? You know, that's all up to you. We have lots and lots of videos, lots and lots of ways to do it. You can go in there with your, uh, you know, even a filbert brush, change it over and make some more perfect petals and stuff like that. But I like the casual nature of it. And, um, you know, it's something to, something to think about and stuff. I like this blue here. I might add a few touches of that later and everything, but uh, that's how you go. So, you know, when you're turning blossoms like that, you got to do that oval shape. Begin, and the first strokes I usually take are the two longer wing petals there. And 
whatever it is, you can shorten it down on one side, but one side right on that on the oval itself has to have a longer pedal that creates the oval. And you got, and that's the big thing, guys, that I think it was all of my students that I've had over the years and stuff, and we always said that the, um, you get, you turn those ovals as you're painting them and painting those petals, you turn those ovals right into circles again, and then that, that's what flattens out your flowers and makes them completely flat, okay? So look for those ovals. That's the most important part, okay? All righty. So uh, there you go. There's the turning of the blossoms. We have varnishing in the landscapes that we're doing also as well. So I'll see you on some of those others. Don't forget to hit like, please. And don't forget to comment. Give us a comment. I love reading your comments on there because it's one of my morning little routines. I sit down with my gum copy, read your comments, and I answer all your comments. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, I like to hear, and even your struggles. I don't mind hearing your struggles. And so if there's something I can help you with, just leave a little comment, okay? Something else you want to see painted, leave a little comment, and we'll get to that, okay? Alrighty, righty. We'll see you guys on the next one.